All right, so welcome to part two of Zero to Hero series. And this one has some prerequisites. So if you answer no to any of these three questions, keep watching. If you answer yes to all of them, then congratulations, you can move on to part three and you don't really need to watch this video unless you really want to. So the questions, the prereqs are, do you actually have any content or assets? If you're starting from scratch and you don't have any yet, that's something that you're gonna have to work on first. The second thing is, if you do have content or assets, are there any tags? So are there any um, people, places, or things that are assigned to those assets or pieces of content? And the third question is, are they machine readable? Remember, we were talking about metadata being well-structured and easily mined and standardized. Yeah, this is why. Um, this is just one reason why, but it's an important reason. So if you don't have that, that's something you got to work on. So... What we're going to go into in this video is how do you actually gain um, some tags if you don't already have them and how do you get them into machine readable format? Now, first of all, if you have content and they already have tags on them, so you answered yes to the first two questions, then you just have to digitize them in a way or mine them, right? And so that's something that um, you can do in a number of ways and we're gonna go over some of those not in this video. This video is really focused on people that did not answer yes to the first and second question, which is, do you have any content? Then the second question is, do you actually have tags on that content? And if you don't, this video is really going to focus on how do you gather tags? And the reason for this is later on when you get into ca categories and taxonomy and machine learning and knowledge graph, that is the foundation of everything that you do. So with that, Let's go check it out. Okay, so let's start from the top. I'm going to go through some pretty common ways of gathering tags, and then we're going to get into some more specific things, really focusing on works or pieces of content that you can uh, gain tags for. So the first thing you wanna look for is a folksonomy. So the folksonomy is general tags that are user created and are not controlled in any way. So there's no oversight on these. So there are two ways of finding these. So the first is if you actually have tags already being assigned to your content by your staff or your students or whoever you're working with, even your customers. So you can work with that. If you don't, then you can have something which I call, you know, a tag party uh, where you ask a lot of the people that are going to be your end users to go in and actually do some sample tagging for you so you can get some of those tags. The other way to do it is to mine for tags. Now, this only works if you are really starting out. You don't have a lot of content yet. You just kind of have an idea of what you're looking for. Um, or you really just need a lot of data all at once to really, you know, just play around with creating some of these things. A golden rule, and please don't forget this, don't worry about having a tag for everything under the sun. Only worry about having tags or terms or, or you know, headings, if you will, uh, for content you actually have or you know you will have. Because if you don't do that, if you don't keep everything in scope, you're going to have a really hard time. And this is actually a very important rule because a lot of people that want to get um, taxonomies and, and knowledge graphs and other things right off the shelf and they just use them, it's not going to do you much good because you don't know how well it fits your needs or your customer's needs or your user needs because you haven't really done the homework first. So please keep that in mind as we go through all of this. So a very common place to mine for tags is Twitter. So here I have on the screen and I'm going to link um, the actual link to this in the description below so you can go check this out. Um, but this is one that I've used in my past using Tweepy, which is a Python way of grabbing um, Twitter tags from the API. So this actually goes through step-by-step -step directions on how to actually use that. 
If you're not sure what an API is, if you're not sure of how to use one, I will try to find a pretty decent video on those. I think that's pretty rudimentary. So I'm not gonna go over it in this video, but I will put something in the comments or in the description below so you can go check those out. Keep in mind, everybody is allowed to use Twitter. The good, the bad, the ugly. <laughs> so there are many news stories where um, chatbots, for instance, um, have been trained on Twitter uh, content and it's become, I think, racist and bigoted in a matter of minutes. So be very, very careful what you mine from this. Um, but it is a good place to start as long as you go in with eyes wide open. Another strategy that you can use is going and looking at your competition or going and looking at similar sites to see what kind of tags they use. So here I'm going to use IMBD as an example. And you can see here that um, they don't have anything off to the left. This is becoming more common. But if you open up the menu, it does give you, you know, how they organize everything on their site. Now, this isn't tagged specifically, but these are, you know, the high level categories. And you can also learn from this. So we can see different types of movies. You can look at uh, different celebs, TV shows, awards. So let's just go look at the awards for a second. So let's click on Oscars. And then you can see here, they're also breaking these down by um, history and by winners. So let's go with 2020. And you can see here that they're breaking this up by the different Oscar awards. And so this tells you how they are structuring all of the metadata behind the scenes. So let's say, um, let's click on the Irishman here. All right, so now we're looking at the Irishman and you can see, um, this is just the general metadata that you would see on any description page. So this isn't really talking about the tags. So now we understand how deep their tagging structure goes. This is gonna be really important when we talk about um, categorization and taxonomy. So let's go back a step so when we are looking at this, this is the last level of their, um, their tagging structure, so to speak. Each of these videos, or each of these movies, I should say, have best motion, motion picture of the year for 2020 in their tags, whether those are two different tags or one tag. I would suspect they're two because you have 2020 over here as just a date range to, to filter by. And then you have best motion picture and other things that are structured on the page. So if I was using this as my cue as to how um, I can gather tags, I would say, okay, if I am using movies as, as my assets, I need to have date range and you know maybe awards and award types as tags that I need to have. And then I can go through these and I actually can say, okay, there's the Oscars, there's um, best movie picture of the year. Those are tags that I could just grab from this site. As a general rule, when you're looking at any kind of tags on sites, you're looking at them. If, if, as long as they're not a made up word or they're not a trademark or already copywritten, nobody owns them. What they do own is the composition. So for instance, Oscar um, having best motion picture right underneath as the direct child, that composition would be owned by IMBD. So this is um, a good example of how to go in and borrow from others without infringing on intellectual property. And you have to be very careful not to do that. All right, so let's put this one to rest and look at well, how can you mine from other people's folksonomies or how can you create your own folksonomy? So the very first thing that you can do is do a card sort. So that is, again, assuming that you do have content or assets already. And I'm going to link a video below on card sorting, but I am actually gonna be teaching how to do a card sort in a later video if you wanna check that out. Um, and I'm also going to do one on how to teach children to do a card sort. So if you want to teach your, your kiddos as you're um, maybe teaching from home, I'm going to do that the last week in August. So check back for that as well. So a card sort is literally just gathering the tags from your users, the people that would be looking at that content. You can also go in and you can use 
techniques where you can pre-populate um, a database or a repository so that your users can go in and do their tagging as a sample so that you can gather those. Again, this is assuming you don't already have them doing tagging of their own. If you already have them doing tagging of their own, you can then easily mine for those or you can just extract those from the database if they are already controlled and you can just download them as a CSV or a SCOS file or a JSON. We're gonna go over what to do with it in a later video. Right now we're just talking about how do you gather these things up. Hard sorting can be done physically and in person and those are not machine readable. So you would have to make sure that you get those and then digitize them. The better way to do card sorting is um, in, a, in a digital sense where you can either use survey tools, Qualtrics is a good one, um, Optimal Sort. And what that allows you to do is do card sorting and then it's all digitized for you. So you don't have to worry about digitization. If you can populate a repository so that you can go in and um, have your users, your end users do the tagging. So let's go and look at some more examples. All right, so you can also use Slack. So here, if I, I tagged Ellie here, and by the way, this is a good uh, Slack channel to join. It's free. It's all about knowledge graphs. Um, you can see that I'm tagging it with Ellie. So there is something behind the scenes where it knows that Ellie is a person. It knows that um, Tom Dealey is a person. And so that when I put the at symbol, it knows that's what I'm, I'm tagging. Uh, LinkedIn allows you to do this. You know, the Twitter hashtag, those are all ways of uploading something and having people then comment on it. Um, another tool that's not really well known is called Omeka. And you can actually upload a whole bunch of things here, whether they are images or documents for people to go in and actually add tags to. Now, this one's a little bit more intensive if you don't already have one set up. If you already have you know, a back-end tool that your own company has created, that's also very common. So here we're looking at an Omeka example for um, this Merchant uh, Maritime Veterans Project. And so these are all the tags that they have on their content. And this is called a tag cloud. I'm sure you've all seen this before. So um, it looks like New York City is very common. So if I would click on that tag, it would then conduct a search for anything that has that tag on it. Another one is this uh, Citizens Archivist dashboard where it's looking at um, the National Archives. And this is a really cool project because it not only um, has been curated by lots of different people, but it's, it's adding more cultural heritage and um, history to documents that otherwise wouldn't have. Let's go and check out the American History Collection. Let's go look at the transcript of record volume. Again, this is just another example as to how you could mimic this kind of structure in your own repositories to try to get those tags. And this is not a one and done thing. Setting up a way to gather your users' tags is, can I say it, emphatically so important for you to keep going. It's not something that you can set and forget. You're, you're, you have to constantly be adding new terminology, understanding how your users describe things. So this is a really important lesson to keep in mind as you go forward. Okay, so here I can just look at the transcript if I would like, or I can add a contribution. You can see the tags that have already been added. Now here, you'll notice that the person who added this tag has been noted. So you have to be careful when you are doing anything that's public or kind of like an open call for tags that you keep it anonymous. As long as it can't be traced back to the real person, you're okay, but you have to be very careful about that. Uh, so here you can see that this has been done six days ago. So again, the reason that you might want to um, track who's adding it and when is it's just more metadata that you can use for understanding the quality or understanding um, you know, the different trends and some of the, the business intelligence behind what you're doing. So we're not gonna use that in this lesson, but we're definitely gonna use it in others. So if I zoom into this, I can see what this transcript is all about. So. Um, it is uh, for the Second Circuit of the United States Circuit Court of Appeals. So that's interesting. That's not actually one of the tags. So if I wanted to add this as a tag, because I'm thinking, well, if I was looking for um, information, yes, I would want to make sure that I can find something on Marcus Garvey and um, 
things about the United States of America as the defendant. However, um, understanding which court uh, it came from is also very important. So here I'm going to type in United States, C-I-R-C-U-T, doing that on purpose, Court of Appeals, Second, well, actually I'm gonna add that as a second tab. Okay, so you notice that I misspelled something. So this is something to, again, keep in mind, just because your users are tagging something doesn't mean it's correct. It gives you an insight into how they're tagging and what tags you might want to consider having in your taxonomy. So um, misspellings, uh, not getting the word right, tagging from my own perspective is very common in a folksonomy. It does not mean it substitutes real indexing of content and whether that's by machines or by subject matter experts, we will have a whole video on that. There are standards, there are best practices, how to get the most out of your tagging. We will go over all of that. But for now, we're only talking about folksonomy. So just keep in mind, having um, a lot of people do tags will give you um, a better understanding of kind of the, the wisdom of the crowd, so to speak. There's a whole book on that, by the way, that's really good. Uh, so here I'm going to fix my mistake, okay? And I'm gonna add it as a tag. And you'll notice this is also a very good practice is it's in red. Why is it in red? Well, first I can change it, but it's also because there should be a, a, an amount of time where editors can go in and check my work, make sure that it's accurate. Anytime you are using direct from the user information, you do not want it to be a direct edit. <laughs> that is a very costly mistake and I have made it in the past, so please don't do that. Um, so again, this is just saying that this is a suggestion at this point, whether it's after amount of time or after somebody's reviewed it, then it becomes um, an item of record. And because of this unique use case, um, you can actually type out uh, what the transcription of this page is. So far, we've gone through um, some examples as to how to um, borrow from others whether it's mining or just directly looking at something and manually um, adding these again in a digital way. And you can use these in, a, you can add these into Excel. You know, it's no shame. A lot of people start out in Excel. And then we also went over into how to gather your own folksonomic tags. Um, keep in mind, you want to always think about the actual content and assets that you have or you want to have, who your actual users are. Just keep in mind, we're also going to be going over how to use a pre-made taxonomy in the same vein before we get to part three, which is going to be actually creating the structure. So with that, there is only one task for this week, and that is to go out and find a folksonomy, an example of one, and link it down below. And I will then go in and comment on the pros and cons of each, and I'm really looking forward to it. So thank you. And I'll see you next time.